Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how the Powered Local Wi-Fi marketing system works. And before I do, I thought I'd give you an overview of how Wi-Fi is currently implemented, or guest Wi-Fi is currently implemented in, uh, in venues, in locations globally. You would have gone into a venue before and into a location where you would have seen Wi-Fi and there would have been no password at all. So you could have gone in, clicked network, don't have to put in any details and just access the network. And in, typically in this environment, the location has got the internet from their uh, internet service provider or their telephone company, and they've just decided to have it open free for all. And in that case, it's very, very dangerous because somebody can go into the browser and they can type in uh, some basic network settings and they can access the router, they can use um, default password that you can Google anywhere to get access to the router, or worse, they can get access to other devices on the network, which might be critical infrastructure, it might be food delivery uh, systems, it might be point of sale systems, it might even be other computers connected to the network. Funnily enough, you'll also see lots of locations around the world that will have uh, a password. So you'll have to ask somebody in the business for the password, and they'll give you the password. And this is actually no more secure than having no password because once somebody has that password to access the network as a, as a customer in that venue, they can also just quickly go onto the browser. They can type in some settings if they know what they're doing. And, and most people that have put a Wi-Fi router in their home will, will know these same settings and they can access all these devices. So it's very, very dangerous. Lastly, you might see some guest Wi-Fi implementations where, whether it's provided by one of the major Wi-Fi hardware companies, and it's a very clunky experience to get on that Wi-Fi. It's almost like filling out some sort of a home loan application. You have to fill in lots of details, tick lots of boxes. It takes, you know, four or five minutes to fill in the information like name, email, your address, all these sorts of things into the form, like you typically see at airports, actually and you click submit and then it might show you an ad and then you sit around and you wait and then you get onto the network. And so all these things are things that we think are broken with Wi-Fi because uh, locations need a secure way to give their guests Wi-Fi, but they actually need it to be very user friendly. It needs to be very simple and easy so that people like the experience rather than begrudge that experience for doing it. And that's really what Powered Local uh, is serving to do. So Powered Local really works with locations uh, that have, whether it be hospitality, so your restaurants, bars, nightclubs, uh, retail, so apparel or furniture, or really any retail, maybe automotive. Uh, entertainment is a big one, so theme parks, uh, it might be family entertainment centres, it might be amusement parks, it might be water parks, uh, public spaces, libraries, museums, aquariums, this sort of entertainment space. We also find uh, other areas like medical, dental, in the waiting rooms, there's a, a, a need for guest Wi-Fi. Arenas and shopping centers is a big one as well. So all these places will have different needs for giving out guest Wi-Fi. It always starts with having a great, um, ideally a great experience for people to access internet. But then what happens is uh, the locations what you want is you want to be able to capture something in exchange for the internet. You know, whether that's an opted in email address so you can market to that person or a phone number or perhaps some insights. Perhaps it's knowing how frequently they come. And so Powered Local exists to do that. And I'm going to start with the, by showing you the login process here um, because I think that's very, very important. The login process that we built uh, is designed to be one click once you've been on our network before, in any of our locations before. So we have thousands and thousands of locations around the globe. And if you've gone to one of those locations and then you go back to another one, a different brand, a different cafe, a different theme park, because we already know who you are, we don't need to ask all your information again because that's just not really nice. But what we will do is ask you to confirm that you are that person and that you agree to use the Wi-Fi network. So you'll see here, we have a Wi-Fi network at the top. I'm just gonna do this a little bit faster so you're not sitting around waiting. Um, and you'll see here, we'll connect to the network here, and we're gonna pop up with a login page. 
Now, the first thing that you'll see is it's branded. Uh, it says, welcome to Baskin Robbins. Welcome back, Kevin. Not Kevin, click here. Now, in most cases, uh, it's going to be Kevin because his phone did connect that first time. Kevin, in this case, never went into Baskin and Robbins. He went into another, uh, another location, might be a coffee shop, and provided his details there. And they were on the powered local network. And so now that he's going to Baskin and Robbins, he hasn't ever agreed to the T's and C's at their venue, but we do know who he is, and we're going to let him agree to that and get Wi-Fi without having to put in all his information again. Okay? But just for argument's sake, let's say we want to show you what it looks like to put in the information and how simple it is. So I'm going to click Not Kevin, click here. Okay? And what you're going to see here is a very simple first step. Either connect with Facebook or type in your email here. Connect with Facebook, uh, you need to authenticate with Facebook. It might require you to put in your Facebook password or provide the email. And we think just putting your email is much, much easier. But some, uh, some brands actually like the Facebook connection. Uh, it's totally up to them. Then we're going to put in the email address here. Okay, and what I want to show you with this, which I think is very, very important, is I'd say 95% of Wi-Fi providers uh, in the world just let any email address go through, which means the quality of the data that actually comes through is very poor. Anybody could type in something at gmail.com or gmail.com, C-O-N, misspelling, typos. And so it means that the data that comes through is not so good. I think the industry average is something like uh, 45 to 50 percent of data that comes through a Wi-Fi connection is even valid, uh, and in our case, it's 96 percent. So we run a five-point validation on all the uh, data that we collect. Um, that's uh, the technical stuff. Is we're checking MX records, we're pinging the email, uh, the email address, we're checking the server exists, the domain uh, rather exists. Uh, we're using third-party APIs to validate those emails are uh, correct and that they won't bounce. Because the last thing that you want is to collect customer data that's opted in and then not be able to communicate with that person. So we validate that data. In this example, we're only asking for one bit of information, which is an email address. But I will show you later that we have a form structure where we usually will ask for phone number, we'll ask for a zip code or postcode uh, if relevant, We'll ask for gender if we need to. Um, and on that gender point, we have uh, quite a bit of automation happening on the back end that you don't see. So if Richard, in this case Richard Hendricks, uh, has uh, connected to Wi-Fi or has tried to opt in, we use a global database of names, uh, like a births, deaths, marriages type environment to check whether Richard is uh, male or female, what percentage of Richards are male or female, uh, and if it's higher than 97% for one gender, like 97% of Richards are male, then we won't need to ask the gender. And, and, and the, the relevance of that is it's one less thing to ask your customers to fill in where you still get to know that information. So we really want to make this as, as seamless as possible. We then have an opt-in. Here, would you like to receive updates and offers from this venue and partners? Uh, agree and continue or no thanks. Either way, you will give your guests access to the Wi-Fi because that's just a good experience and that's what you want to be doing. Uh, so in this example, the reason why we say from this venue and partners is because some brands work as a collective where an umbrella company might have one, two or three different brands that they own and they want to be able to use the data between those brands and that gives them the ability to do that. So let's say agree and continue. Then what we have uh, in the next step is uh, an optional function uh, here at Powered Local, which is our sentiment analysis. And the sentiment analysis function is where we're going to ask the person to rate their experience in the venue so far. Uh, so we're saying, that, great, how can we improve the experience? Lovely. And then it's just going to redirect straight through to the uh, landing page. And in some cases, it can redirect to a home page, a landing page, app download page. If you're trying to drive a mobile app downloads, it might be a specific event page, a menu page, uh, something custom as well. So it's completely up to you what you want to do with that redirect. So what happens with the data uh, once somebody has accessed the Wi-Fi? So you can see how simple and easy that is. We have a portal which you'd be provided, which is a custom 
client portal. And the first step here is your, your master dashboard. So we're showing here uh, who's online now, how many people are online now, how, who is actually online. So if there were online users in this view, you would see a list of them right there. Uh, the emails collected, how many emails have been collected, how many phone numbers have been collected, how many people were online today that were unique versus total, online for all time, unique versus total, how many redirects did we get to your website? And the reason why that's valid is because if you're using this as a traffic generation uh, to a particular website, a blog, something like that, you'll, you'll get that measurement there. What percentage of people are returning? And the Facebook ad value, this is almost a sort of a, a high level vanity metric to be fair, which is if somebody does the Facebook login option and they choose check-in, which means you want your users to be able to optionally check in at your location on Facebook, then every time they do a check-in, we do get from Facebook a, a friends count, uh, which means if I have a thousand friends, it knows that I have a thousand friends, we would find that out. And what we're saying is if you do a check-in, potentially a thousand people would have seen that post, depending on how Facebook decides to structure the news feed of that person. And we know that with Facebook, on average, it's about $10 uh, CPM, so cost per 1,000 impressions. So we just then work out the total of, if you really, on average, were, about to, were to spend money on Facebook ads to your audience, how much would you have had to have spent to get the same sort of reach as what you've got through the Facebook check-in? And that's just a measurement there. The next view is uh, the analytics view. So I might just zoom in here. It's not letting me zoom in. So you'll see over here, what we're seeing is 13,000 people have connected to the Wi-Fi over the last 30 days. Uh, 1,695 chose the Facebook option uh, with check-in, another 1,700 with a Facebook login, 3,500 filled out the form, and then another 6,500 did the mesh network. Now, the mesh network uh, is very, very, very important. It means if somebody has logged into our network, we actually do give them another opt-in if they connect to the network, which I didn't show you on that um, login sequence, which is, do you want to automatically connect to Powered Local when in range of one of our devices? And if you say yes to that, the T's and C's will state that that information will be shared with other venues, and we're giving you a great user experience, but that you are also being opted in to other venues where you actually do spend time, not just walking past. And so if somebody has gone into one of our other venues, um, then there's also uh, the roaming ability and there's an insight into how many people have used your network off the back of that. Um, we show the gender split, uh, login method, and of course, uh, down here, popular times. It's really great to see popular times from a, from a high level view uh, within the location. We also have a, uh, a visit view, which is um, a, a, a feed of people that have come into the venue. So you can see here, um, there's just a, I'll scroll down quickly just so you can see a feed of everybody that's coming to the venue, name, uh, we don't show any PII data, personally identified data on this page in terms of email or phone numbers, but we also have um, amount downloaded, time on venue, um, and, uh, and what device they've got. That can be viewed also as a spreadsheet view as well, in terms of how many Facebook friends, previous visits, etc. It can be exported as well. All the views that I've talked about here can be viewed by, if you've got multiple locations, all of them, or you can drill down on individual locations as well. Uh, then we have the page uh, set up. So here, you can customize the logo, the text, uh, whether you want to use the Facebook login, yes or no, uh, what questions you want to be asking, and do you want uh, to make those uh, required mandatory questions. Uh, we also have the ability to append terms and conditions, and you can preview, of course, anything that you've built in here. Then we have the control settings. So in here, um, each location is a, is a location. <laughs> uh, and then within the location, you may have multiple access points, so multiple Wi-Fi devices. And so each device can have a specific um, a set of settings um, and a specific name as well. But in this case, we're going to show you how you can customize the network name, the SSID. Uh, you can customize the channel. You can choose the transmission power, how far you want the Wi-Fi to reach, the bandwidth that you want to allow, the data allowance, the time limit, 
uh, and which is very important in hospitality because uh, in hospitality, the ability to turn tables faster is relevant. And so if you can uh, limit that to maybe half an hour, uh, people won't want to stay for hours and hours without the internet access. You can also provide a lockout time, which shows or, or determines how long somebody needs to wait after they've been kicked off the network before they can come back in. Uh, blocking particular networks, P2P networks, downloads, and uh, day parting. So you might want to set particular times your Wi-Fi will be on and off without it having to be on all the time. Uh, and then we finally have uh, our apps and integrations. There are a lot more than this, but this gives you a bit of a view. So whether it be MailChimp, Slack, uh, Facebook, Campaign Monitor, uh, my guest list, Zapier. So you know that integrates with thousands of apps, but you know whether it be Salesforce, Bronto, Adobe Cloud, a CRM platform, uh, we'll integrate with all of them. It's very, very simple and easy to use. So all these things combined uh, show you why it's a very simple and easy platform to use. And some of the use cases I think that are relevant with the data here uh, uh, that, that we're seeing throughout our clients are using the data captured and pushing it into the mail platforms so that, uh, I might just go back to the dashboard view here, uh, or, or the analytics view. Um, it's using the data, which unlike getting subscription data of a user on a, their website, which is a subscribe form, when you get it through Wi-Fi, it's very unique and it's very powerful. And the reason why it's so powerful is because, number one, you're getting their contact details as part of an opt-in and giving the user experience, but you're also tying that information to visitation data. So if you can imagine, if somebody comes in and fills in a loyalty uh, application in a retail store, you know, they put in their name, their email, their phone number with the retail staff member, that's great. But the only time that venue, that location will know when that person has come back in is if they physically get their app or their, uh, their, their loyalty card and has connected that at the point of purchase. But what about all the people that have come in and haven't purchased? Or what if you don't have a loyalty card? And I'd say 60 to 70% of people in a particular retail outlet won't have a loyalty, uh, some sort of loyalty membership. So this helps identify them. So anytime somebody then walks back into your venue, they don't have to pull their phone out. They don't have to actually manually connect to the Wi-Fi network. Every time at your venue, they are going to automatically connect to the network because their phones will remember the network name and they're pre-authenticated, which means they get a great experience coming back in. They don't need to hassle the staff to ask for a password. They don't need to ask for details on how to connect to the network. And most importantly, you're getting information on their visitation that this person is a regular, which means if they're a regular, don't communicate with them uh, with offers and incentives, which will devalue your brand. But if somebody's come in and they've stopped coming, that's a great time to activate them with some sort of an incentive to get them back in. Uh, so whether it be just that you're building your email database, whether it's that you want to enrich your email database, so you already have contact details of people from some other method, website, online bookings, wherever it might happen, online sales, uh, an app, but you might only have a few points of data, but you don't have the visitation data attached. So with our data, we can help enrich that. It might be that you want to do reverse loyalty, like I mentioned. If, if, if uh, Richard comes in every second week regularly, he's a regular, but how do we get him to come back in weekly? Maybe you would connect with MailChimp and send an email with a limited time offer for maybe one week or, or 10 days saying, hey, come back in and get this uh, with an incentive. It might be uh, retargeting, which I think is very, very powerful. Our integration into Facebook means you can build a custom audience on Facebook which means an audience of people that you want to advertise to that are coming from Wi-Fi. So you know they've been in your location. So instead of just targeting anybody with an interest level on Facebook, you can now do it to people that have physically been into your location and connecting the Facebook um, uh, uh, system is very, very, the Facebook integration is very simple. We also talk about offline and conversions. If you are running ad campaigns to drive somebody into a venue or into a location, like local awareness ads, how do you know if the person's come back in? And with this, we report back the conversion of that walk-in back to Facebook and it will show within the performance report of Facebook the conversion event so you can see your metrics there. 
Uh, there's also um, insights, there is demographic profiles that you can pull out of the data. Uh, so there's lots and lots of things that you can get out of the Powered Local network. If you are interested in using Powered Local, the best thing to do is either to book a demo with one of our sales experts or one of my, or myself, one of myself, uh, with myself, so that you can get a better overview of how the platform works and how we can customize it for you. Uh, the costing, if you go onto poweredlocal.com and you submit uh, a Get a Live quote, uh, we'll send you out a, a custom price um, quote uh, based on how many locations you have and a bit more information about um, your, your circumstances. Uh, hopefully that was informative and uh, thanks for spending the time.